You can't stop a man's prayer that prays in tongues because you don't even know what he's talking about. You, within this extreme, you can't decipher what that thing is about. You may suspect, but you are not sure. So why are you not using your advantage? Why? So you may only see the ability to pray in tongues as something that is given to you because you are a Pentecostal or a Pentecostal. You will be speaking in tongues, be, be speaking anyhow. You don't even know what you are saying. When you give your attention to these things, you will get to a level. Understanding becomes a second nature to you. Where, oh my God, 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 oh my God. There will be a bridge, a strong bridge between your natural life and your supernatural life, your spirit life. And over time, your spirit life will begin to superimpose itself over your soul and begin to superimpose itself over your body such that you will not be able to make a decision in the flesh again. And believe me, if there's anything you saw that Jesus did, if there's any operation of the spirit you saw in Jesus, he gave it to us so that we will know it has been now been released. When the Holy Ghost came, there was nothing in Jesus that he held back. He gave everything to us. But the key here is not to pursue experiences. It's to pursue that intercourse. That level. And listen to me. It has nothing to do with your book. Or you, you might not be educated. This dimension is not close to you because you didn't go to school. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In fact, I have found that people that didn't go to school operated in it more. I Babalala was in a meeting with the choir, with a member of his choir, and they were rehearsing a song. And as they were singing, he, li- he unconsciously he- he levitated, lifted up. They said, Baba Tin Law, Baba Tin Law, like Baba is going. Baba is going, no? Baba, they quickly held his leg, dragged him back. There's a prophet in Ghana. He's not educated, he doesn't know how to read. In one of his experiences, the Lord came to him. They brought another head, they moved his head, put another one. In a vision, he woke up with the ability to read scriptures. How do you explain that? One? So, we are not talking about pursuing experiences. I'm saying that there is a wiring God has given you that you are, you may be up on the scale of one to ten, you may be operating on two. It is this intercourse between the inherent gift and the inherent capacity that will trigger you to move from level 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 to 7. By the time you operate at the peak of that, mani- of that, of that operation, people will think you are an apostle. You are just a believer. So you can now see that this subject of laziness has done more harm to many of us. Because somewhere in, for us, except we close the door and we pray, we have not started praying. There's a place for that. There's a place for that. And there are some people you should never pray with. I, I didn't say they are not born again. I said you should never pray with them. Because you will struggle. If you know the kind of person you are, that when you pray, you don't like people touching phones and responding to WhatsApp messages. Don't pray with people who do it. They will make you offended. Because they will even come back and tell why you are praying God told me. How can God be telling you, you are pressing phone? You are pressing uh, this. I saw you send a message to your fiancé. You, 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 you now say God told you what. Oh God, please, we are not going to pray together again. Because for you, it is a symbol of unseriousness. It's better for unserious people to congregate together and let serious people also congregate together. When you move in this ability and you graduate in it to a level, one of the blessings that God will give to you is the, I'm talking in terms of inherent capacity and your inherent gift, is that you will now become, you will begin to develop forensic abilities. You will begin to develop forensic ability not because you prayed, but because your development has gotten to that point. Jesus, Mark chapter 2 verse 8, he knew what they were thinking. He didn't pray to know. Jesus knew what they were thinking. He didn't pray to know. He knew. Because his function has developed. Look at it. And immediately, Mark chapter 2 verse 8, he perceived in his spirit that they saw reason within themselves. And he he started responding to what they were thinking. That means in the realm of the spirit, 
what you think they are, is a legal conversation. Your thought patterns are legal conversations. If you keep, oh my God, if, you, if I pray for you and say, Father, bless her, I want her to be married in three months. But she has maintained a thought pattern of difficulty and impossibility. Over time, even though prayers have been said, what she has taught will prevail. What I just told you now, think about it. If you maintain a particular thought pattern to the point where somewhere at the back of your mind is there, without you, without any effort, and I come and I pray for you, I cannot cast out that spirit. The spirit has built a house. It has roofed it. They live there. So even when I say, you spirit of Asimode, you spirit of uh, spirit husband, pa, fire! The fire will go and the thing will come back. Because somebody has maintained a thought pattern that is not consistent with the word of God. To the point that the thought pattern has built a stronghold. So what you need to do is to bring down the cause and the symptoms will disappear. Come on, say I'm blessed. 